if you're relying on your zone to tell you when to start your seeds, you are already behind because zones do not tell you everything and neither does even your last published frost date. Today's video, we're going to look at signs and symptoms that you can spot outdoors right now to tell you whether or not it's going to be a late or an early spring. This is important because that means your last frost date, your published last frost date, can move. And it has moved. I can guarantee if you've been gardening long enough, you've noticed it does move. And every year, you're either cursing yourself for starting things too early, or you're cursing yourself for starting things too late. Such as last year, things were warm right off the get-go, and I missed probably some of the most valuable warmth that would have helped to germinate a lot of my stuff and propel them into the future. And I started sowing stuff later than what my last frost date actually was that year. And it had cooled off so much by then and ended up in a really cool summer. So let's avoid that this year. Let's listen to what Mother Nature is telling us, not what the internet says, despite the fact that you're watching a video on the internet right now. I digress. Let's look at signs and symptoms. That, that's the moral of said story. So what signs and symptoms are we looking at if we're pointing towards an early summer? So here are your environmental signals telling us what's going on. Number one is the soil itself. The biggest sign as to whether or not it's going to be an early spring is actually your soil temp. If your soil temp starts warming faster than your air temp is, then that is your sign that you're headed into an early summer. Now, you can get soil temp probes. Obviously, you can't stick in the ground when it's frozen, but you can have this ready to go when you begin to kind of see the ground show. Your soil is a massive heat sink, and this heat sink in turn warms the air around it. So it's actually more important to determining the temperature to come over the air temp, which can, if, for example, if you live in like Gallagher or something, it can go up and down pretty rapidly all the time. It means nothing. If you're noticing the snowpack begin to disappear. So what that means is you're going to have a whole bunch of snow outside and your snow is going to stay the way it is and get built up on all year. But when you notice that the pack went from here and it's slowly starting to go down, and even though it still snows, it only kind of goes this much higher, but then it goes down again, and, and the snow falling doesn't seem to catch up with the snow that existed previously, that is your sign that you're headed for an early summer. Next step is actually watching your woody perennials. So you're gonna look for bud break. Now, bud break does not mean leaves, Bud break means you're going to go outside right now. You're going to take a photo of the branches of your woody perennials. And then you're going to compare those photos to photos that you're going to take throughout the months. What you're going to notice is the buds will begin to swell. So what was flat or relatively flat will begin to mound. This is your sign that the soil is warming up much deeper in the system, waking up the plants around it early summer. Next step actually isn't looking at the daytime temps. It is looking at the nighttime temps, temps. So if your nighttime temps are categorically going upwards every single night, it's a little bit warmer than the night before and they're not going downwards anymore consistently, sign of an early summer. What this means is you're going to start everything earlier. Now, what points to a late summer? Because that is also incredibly important. First off is cold, saturated soil. So when you look outside and your soil begins to appear, does it just look muddy and wet and full, for lack of a better term, and it doesn't seem to be getting less full looking and it just kind of is hanging around? Late summer. Delayed perennial wake-ups, that whole bud-breaking thing, like I said, really important you go take those photos right now because that's actually going to tell you when it's also going to be a late summer. Because if you Google the plants you have and typically when bud break begins to happen, you can have a little bit of an idea if it's behind or ahead of what the norm is for that plant. Next up is actually unstable jet streams. Now you're probably wondering, oh, what is that? I don't know what that is. Just Google jet streams in XYZ area and you're going to see maps of jet streams that are relatively recent, all we're looking for to tell us if it's going to be a late summer is unstable jet streams. So if they're not consistently telling, giving us the same data all the time on the map, 
then that's a sign that we are headed to a later summer. Because if they are going really, really high and really, really low and really rapidly flopping around, that's a sign of a late summer. If you're getting frequent cold rains, frequent snowing, that sort of thing, you're nowhere near summer. So yeah, that it's going to be late. When it comes to adjusting your schedule based on whether it's a late summer or an early summer, doesn't necessarily just start with your seeds. In some cases, you actually may want to start your seeds at the exact same point in time, but you want to adjust things like when you harden off or when you move things outdoors. So tomatoes, for example, or peppers, you would want to delay the transplant outdoors. Now, my rule of thumb with all of these, except for onions, those you can put a little bit earlier, but tomatoes and peppers for sure, I want my nighttime temps to be around that 10 degrees Celsius mark. Until that hits consistently, I don't put them outdoors. Now, if I know it's going to be a late, later year, I will possibly delay my seeds only because I don't want giant tomato plants getting transplanted outdoors. Everything catches up in the end. Simple as that. This year, I have this feeling like it's going to be an early summer, hopefully. But the seeds that you would actually change the timing on this for would be your direct sown crops. So winter squash, summer squash, melons, cucumbers, lettuces, carrots, beets, runner beans, bush beans, all of these, when your soil temp hits the soil temp it needs to be at, which is why everyone on planet Earth should own a soil temp thermometer. A, because you're watching this channel and you're nerdy and you hit that subscribe button so you're part of the geek crew, but also because it just makes sense. And every seed has a temperature it likes to start at. And you want to be able to hit that. So once it does hit that soil-wise, you're going to pop those buggers in. And in times, it can be earlier and a lot earlier. You don't just start these early so you get an earlier harvest. At times, that early start can and will prevent against pests, disease, excessive levels of heat, excessive levels of sun that could cause bolting or burning, things like that. So it actually is not just you being ahead of the game. It actually makes sense in a lot of cases, particularly when we're talking about some of these cooler planet crops. Now, if you're going to play God with the timing of when your seeds start or when they're put outdoors, there are some things that you want to be prepared for or get ready to deviate on. So say you've determined you think it's going to be an early summer. Well, here are the things you want to have in your toolbox in the case that this happens, it's just so you're prepared. And if your prediction was wrong or someone It's not that you would be wrong. You wouldn't. Someone probably just did some crazy voodoo and jinxed it for you. It's more like it. But just in case something happens, you're going to want frost cloth, low tunnels, portable containers, and the willingness to lose a few plants. Because that is the reality of starting things a little bit too early. Now, say you think to yourself, it's going to be a late summer. I'm going to start everything later. Well, you need to be prepared, not necessarily in the beginning, but at the end with things like shade cloth, possibly succession planting, drip irrigation to make sure things don't really dry out as much because it's getting later in the year, as well as just with both of these scenarios, fast for maturing varieties are always a good idea. What I will say is that the best gardeners are not just going with the flow. They're watching the outdoors and they are reacting accordingly. And that's just the way it works. And if you want to become one of these great gardeners, then you're going to want to join the Geek Crew, hit that subscribe button, and you're going to want to check out this video for what crops are the most valuable ones to grow. That'll bring down the grocery bill, and that is what Google says to watch because they're watching you, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!